one more important concept before we start editing our code is understanding this uh, constructor thing. And what is it? Well, a lot of you might already know it, but I'm going to cover it briefly. But if you have more questions, you can always leave questions. Now we do see that here we have two classes. They, this one extend the other one. Okay. Now there is something called abstract class. Okay. Like this. Now when you define an abstract class, you can have same properties, but in general, you shouldn't have the body of a method. Okay. So when you have abstract class, this abstract classes just work like, you know, blueprint for child classes. Once more, one thing though, like abstract class itself still works as a parent class or base class. So similarly, it will have a child class. So this is a child class. So car class extends the vehicle class. Okay. All right. And then this class itself has its own properties. Now all these properties once again would be would be able to extend or override actually in our child class okay all right now one of the properties of this uh, abstract class is that if you try to instantiate it you will get error for example ver v equal let's see So as you see here we have an error abstract class cannot be instantiated try creating an instance of a concrete subtype so it's telling you over here go ahead and make this class a parent class of a child class and use that child class to create an instance like we did early so you cannot work like this then someone may ask why do you have this abstract class once again i said that in abstract class abstract classes they work as a blueprint okay which means that there are some given criteria properties and uh, child class can use them and child class can also add more on the top of it so abstract class works as the base it's the base and on the top of it you add more and more stuff okay so that's why we call it abstract class because it's a blueprint okay but it doesn't really do anything like when you create a building the building will have foundation underground right without that building without that foundation your building will not stand right and that foundation defines how tall that building should be and how strong that building should be right so that's what the abstract classes do at the same time just like foundation this also works as a parent class like when you create a building on the top of foundation we create more and more layers so we have abstract class on the top of this we may add more functions in our child class for example here you can have a class sorry you can have a method okay you can say car type Okay, that's it. And here you say uh, land runner, whatever it is. Okay, so it's just a type, type of the car. Okay, but this one is not defined over here. Okay, it just defined within this one. So we have world's num, and at the same time, we have car type. Okay, so this is not going to work. So what do you have to do here? You have to say our car and car and then we'll not have any problems so here we could say car dot car type as you can see we can say car dot wool's type or wool's num okay it's still gonna work as you see over here it's printed so one of the basic idea of uh, programming in a lot of other places that work like this like java php c sharp that you will have an abstract class and it's it's something that you should be doing like this this is a common convention and programming rules okay so most of the time if you 
app back app becomes bigger complex so you will have blueprint in your app so rest of the app has to follow the blueprints and work on that all right anyway now back to this idea how the constructor works so this is something called constructor okay so now you have a class name and you define a method without the body and the same as the class name that's called constructor so this is our constructor okay so over here this vehicle itself is the constructor okay why because over here you do see that this is the class name and the method name is also vehicle so when the class name and method name becomes the same the method name is called the constructor of that class so we do have a constructor but why do we need this thing in fact everything works without this constructor right mm -hmm. now see in this vehicle I said that whose number is 10 right what if you don't want to define this value over here okay of course now it's gonna say well this value must be initialized now over here you'll see that okay null nonable instance field rules must be initialized okay so when we assign a value like this any value is called initialization but now over here uh, this one it says okay this variable value has to be initialized so one of the ways we could do it over here okay rules like this and this is still work but now this would cause a problem in our child class now it would say okay in child class you need a constructor like this this is exactly the same thing that one we see we have over here okay now of course with this this is a problem that it created a new problem what is the problem the problem is that well this child class itself uh, has a constructor as well as you can see there's also a constructor just like this one but this constructor actually takes values okay takes values parameters when it gets initialized or when we actually instantiate it when we create an object using this child class it needs something so now you do see that when we actually create an object we call the constructor you can understand it like this okay now this constructor has this parameter that we need to pass to it otherwise it's gonna throw an error so here we can say 4 all right now let's go ahead and run it so we see that number is 4 so if you have a, a constructor in your abstract class and that constructor takes uh, parameters and then at the same time your child class has to have that constructor the same way the parameter should be there otherwise it's gonna create an error now the benefit of having a constructor is this that you can pass value the way you want okay why say for example you want to create another class so let me go ahead and copy this okay all right say over here you might say that plane okay okay plane type all right now what about this planes over here okay how many cars how many wools should it have so here I'll say ver plane and plane so now a lot of planes they might have only three wheels small planes okay so here it's say plane dot wheels num now go ahead and print that okay now of course we need to change it to planes wheels number okay planes wheels number So this is what we see over here so once we, you have an abstract class this could be blueprint for all of your other classes and at the same time 
you can customize each of your child class based on this blueprint. So we are still using wheels, number of wheels, but for each child classes, they are different. Now, how it is possible? It's possible because our child class has a constructor and our child class has a constructor. Why? The reason is because over here, our abstract class has a constructor and that constructor takes something, all right? So that's how things work over here. So with this, we see that the similar idea is implemented over here. So, well, this is a child class. Child class is extending this stateless widget class. The stateless widget constructor takes something like this. And that's how, and that's why we have to pass super.key, something like that. Just exactly same over here we have passed. All right, now with this, I think we have good understanding of basic classes and inheritance as well as abstraction and concrete classes. These are called con concrete classes. Concrete means a solid, okay? And this is called abstract classes. And extending on abstract classes is called inheritance. So car class, inherited vehicle class, plane class, inherited vehicle class. And at the same time, we have better understanding of how constructor works. So in next session, we're gonna dive into this section and start editing.